We are back for Caravan of Garbage. Complete, not complete. I wish it was completing. We're doing all the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. Effortlessly charming Christopher Reeve. A shining light mm. in movies of wildly varying quality, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it, it does feel like diminishing returns. Now, you must point. be happy watching this one, though, because Marlon Brando's not in it. <laughs> First one that he's not in. It certainly uh, S- it helps. Side note, <laughs> we, have we mentioned how weird it is that both Marlon Brando and Russell Crowe have mm. both portrayed Jor-El. Yes. But also, pre-finding fame in the movies, Russell Crowe, as musical artist Russ LaRock, <laughs> released a single called I Just Want to Be Like Marlon Brando. Oh, my goodness. Just want to be like Marlon, Marlon Brando. Do you think that when he got the role as Jor-El, he was like, the prophecy's true? <laughs> <laughs> my music is magic and real. It makes what? things real and happen. Leave a like if you want, uh, Mason. That'd be great. Have you left a like this week? Um, of course he has. Look yep. at him. He's doing it now. He's done it. He's, done it. Yep. he's absolutely done it. Did you know Superman 3 was originally called Superman vs. Superman before they were threatened to be sued by the producers of Kramer vs. Kramer? Huh. Yeah. The non-superhero drama. It's not even Michael Richards Kramer versus Michael Richards Kramer. <laughs> no, absolutely not. But it is also, uh, it's a confusing film in terms of who's the villain, where is it going? Is it a comedy? Who's is the it... main character? Is it... it Superman? Not At... really. Look, at the outset, you get the idea very quickly. They wanted it to be two things. Yeah. And so it just comes across as two separate movies. One is... A Superman movie with not a lot going on, really. Yeah. And the other is a slapstick Richard Pryor comedy where he's like a like he's an unemployed bum, and then he he it turns out he's really good with computers, and he and he runs a heist, and he gets in up up to hijacks. Yeah. And you know also it's not really a Superman movie where one of the major action sequences in this movie is Richard Pryor explaining a thing that Superman did. Yeah, they've given him a lot of space to do. Richard Pryor stuff. But it's not good improv. No, I mean... Like, at all. There's a point where he... He's not not bouncing off anybody either. They all stand there. Well, exactly. It seems like they gave direction... Richard Pryor's going to do some Richard Pryor stuff. Yeah. Just everybody else stand there and cop it. Because there's a point where <laughs> Superman, is he's come back to Smallville and he's receiving an award on stage from the yeah. people of Smallville. And Richard Pryor just shows up dressed as a, a military general in yeah. a Jeep with some kryptonite to, you know, kill Superman or, or, or you know, uh, impede him in some way. And then rather than just... Just throw it throw at him. Throw it at him. He decides to do this thing where he, he's going to also present Superman with an award and he does a big monologue about... The military or yeah, something? something? I don't remember what the monologue was about because yeah. it went for a while. Yeah, but it wasn't good. It it's wasn't bad. good. I uh, like him in things. So do I. <laughs> but not this. But not this particular thing, which I hadn't seen since I was a kid. I think this is my second viewing of this. Yeah, well, yeah, exciting, isn't it? You know, he was obviously a big name at the time and like Brando, he was paid like a staggering amount of money $5 million. And he's famously said he did it for the money. He also had like a crippling drug addiction at the time. Mm-hmm. And he hated the movie. He was like, it's a bad movie. Everybody in this movie hates this movie. <laughs> uh, a lot of people who weren't in this movie hated this movie. Off the top of my head, I'm going to guess Gene Hackman hated this movie. Sure. Because he's not in it. So they just replaced Lex Luthor with a guy who was basically Lex Luthor, but less interesting. Yeah, he's less interesting, but he also does more Lex Luthor stuff. Mm. Like he's a rich, successful businessman. Great. He's running multiple businesses. Well, one's coffee and one's oil. Maybe he's doing other things. Those are the two that I remember him mentioning. Mm. But this movie's just slapstick city, yeah. really. They've, they've really just ramped that up. And I don't think there's a better example of this than when Richard Pryor takes a set of skis and just skis off the roof of a skyscraper. And then he isn't saved by Superman. Or anybody. Anybody. He just falls off a roof <laughs> and then lands and then falls off another roof and then ends up on the street. Oh, side note, this movie opens... And it, it reveals to us that Metropolis is like the world's worst Rube Goldberg <laughs> yeah, machine. I wrote it's the exact just, thing. It's yeah. just a series of interlinked domino-style disasters yep. that are constantly happening. And as I'm watching this, I'm like, oh, that guy's, you know, that guy's going to fall off this bridge, and these telephone booths have crashed together, and yeah. the car's going to crash or whatever. And the bank I'm, robber runs bank out, robber, or whatever. I'm guessing that Superman is going to whoosh in, and he's going to solve, he's going to solve everybody's problems. He's going to rescue this person. Mm-hmm. He's going to stop that bank robber. Whatever. He doesn't. No. He stops like one guy. And the penguin. He re- yeah, he, he he blows out a flaming penguin, <laughs> and he rescues a guy from a from drowning in a car. Yeah. But the rest, everybody else, like the, blind, the robber gets away. The robber gets away. The that guy falls in a ditch. A blind man. He hits a guy in the face with a pie. Yeah. The the blind man 
walks through a valuable painting? Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't what know. What was this meant to show us beyond that Superman hijinks? Could, could oh yeah, it's a Richard. Richard Lester, movie. Lester loves yeah. the hijinks. Mm. There's a moment in the movie where uh, a husband thinks that his wife has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, so he just smushes a grapefruit into her face, face and then just continues to eat it. Uh-huh. I, I, there's a moment where the two crosswalk guys getting a little punch up, a little animated oh, punch yeah, up. The little electronic guys in the in the yeah. traffic signals. Yeah. Why does he do things like this, Richard Lester? Yeah. The director, I don't know because it's funny. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. It wasn't funny at you the time. You called my bluff. <laughs> I want to talk about Chris Reeve though, because you said that he is a beacon of light and hope. And charm. And you know what? This is a worse movie, but he's looking better than ever, quite frankly. He looks great. Now dig on this, James. Yeah. His evil version of Superman is what evil version of Sp- Tobey Maguire Spider-Man wishes he could be. <laughs> His hair's looking great. He's got the perfect amount of five o'clock shadow. The, yep. the suit is dark and just, mm. just dark enough. He's, he's, he's got like a darker tint, like a tan. He's yeah. had a spray tan. Yeah, that's right. Here's the thing about the hair, though. Uh, I didn't realise this. Christopher Reeve suffered from alopecia. Oh. Not male pattern baldness. You know, alopecia where you get the random spot. Yeah. So in three and four, he's wigged up. Huh. Yeah. Well, it's a really good wig. I agree. It's terrific. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. He, he's he's never looked better. And on top of that, he puts in 100% despite not wanting to do this movie since Richard Donner was fired from the last. Mm. Uh, so again, they went on the hunt around Hollywood for names. I've got more names, Mason. Great. Travolta. Huh. Jeff Bridges. Okay. Kurt Russell. Mm. They settled. These options are better than the last one. <laughs> I so agree. I don't know why they... <laughs> Uh, why, why Dustin Hoffman in the? <laughs> well, here's what they apparently settled on. Yes, they settled on Tony Danza. Look, I'm not 100 percent against it. I guess. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. But uh, apparently, they pleaded with Reeve before it all came together, and he agreed only if he could change the script, and he did to some extent. I think though he he brought things to this which I think add to the story in a big way because when he goes back to Smallville, I was watching some interviews of him. He makes the decision to go. Well, I don't need to put on this bumbling persona because I grew up here. Yeah. So I can just act as the person that they knew me as then, mm-hmm. like just 20 years on. Because he's not kind of, he's not Ooh. doing as much tripping over stuff and yeah, like yeah, all yeah. that kind of That's thing. That's true, yeah. He's, he's much cooler and calmer. And he's very much like it. At one point he stands up against the, I guess, his bully in this movie. Yeah. He's like, oh, this, I'm going to show this kid how to bowl. <laughs> and he's like you let the kid can bowl on his own and I will destroy this bowling alley. (laughs) And look, they didn't replace Reeve. No. But they, speaking of Smallville, they did replace Lois Lane, Margot Kidder as Lois Lane, essentially with Annette O'Toole as Lana Lang. Lois Lane appears right at the start and she's like, I've got to go. I'm I'm on holiday. Yeah. Five minutes, 12 lines. And then she shows up at the end and she's like, I'm back. And then the movie's essentially like, well, guess what? You've been replaced with this new person and she's got a diamond ring from Clark Kent. And then she just goes, ugh. And then that's the end. And I guess she got fired or died between movies because she's not in the next one. Yeah, right? Yeah. I think Annette O'Toole's great, though, honestly. I, th- I mean, yeah. she obviously shows up in Smallville later. I have to say that uh-huh. because people will tell As us. Martha Kent, that's Yeah, that's right. right. But, yeah, Margot Kidder, they said that, look, her relationship with Clark Kent, it ran its course because ah. she got her memory wiped, so that relationship essentially no longer exists okay, anymore. I, I'm like, I, I guess. Okay, okay fair but enough. Also, you could have just not mind wiped her at the end of the <laughs> yes, last that's one. that's right. And that would have been fine. Speaking of replace, though, yes. they use Christopher Reeve's high school photo as opposed to Jeff East, who played young Christopher Reeve oh, that's right. in the first Superman movie, who they put on a wig and prosthetics and also dubbed over his voice with Chris Reeve. And he didn't know that. And for years, they had this kind of beef. Him and I had to kind of learn to like each other at first. And, uh, you know, we, we, I don't think he felt comfortable with someone else playing him. They proused him. They proused they, they him. Proused that's him. right. Wow. That being said, I think... The, the tiny snippets of, like, interact... I think the, the cast, for the most part, seem to have settled into their roles in this. Yeah. Like, if they'd given them a better movie and more chance to, you know, to interact... Because I think the, the the tiny interactions we had between Clark and Lois and Jimmy Olsen and Perry White, I think they were actually kind of the best from, from sure. as opposed to previous ones. But again, they got... A minute each, so... I also think there's some really decent Supermanning in this. There's the fire scene mm-hmm. uh, where, you know, he uses the lake to put it out and he grabs the big pipe and they all slide down it. Yeah. Like, you see him 
kind of problem solving. Yeah, right. And I think that's genuinely good Superman stuff. There's also too much acid in this movie. There's a, a, big, a, <laughs> there's a whole room of acid. Well, there's a whole there's room. There's more acid than all the other Superman movies put together, as far as I know. So there's a room of acid. There's a pit of acid in the Superman yes. v Superman fight, which we will talk about. And at the end, he uses a loose jar of acid to destroy yeah. the computer. And in and in a way, I'm <laughs> like, well, this is better than flying backwards through time or whatever, because there was a they, they foreshadowed it. They're like, don't get this acid hot, otherwise it'll acid everything. What if it's a different type of acid? All acids the same. We think <laughs> we're pretty sure. There's also uh, another Superman moment that I really love is the bit where he goes into the photo booth, takes the photos, yep. and, he, and he rips it off, and he takes the time to go, here you go, kid, and he, and he, he gives, runs he gives, off. He gives the kid the uh, the Superman photo, but not the three where yeah. he's changing into Superman. Yeah, a funny joke from Richard Lester. You've got to give it to him, James. I wouldn't even say it's a funny joke. I would say it's just a moment that feels authentically Superman. Yeah. I also like the transition where he runs behind the fence and he kind of changes into Superman. I know there is that kind of weird fade as he, uh -huh. does, as he does it, but yeah. I think that's a cool kind of like image as well you know what I mean that kind of feels like a comic book yeah, kind yeah. Of transition did there. you know that the original treatment for this film included Brainiac Mr. Mixes Pitalik and Supergirl I did and know and they're that. like yes. we don't like this <laughs> so instead it'll be about the computer guy and also a guy who wants to make a killing in coffee and oil and then they build a big computer and Superman fights a big computer. <laughs> so, so yeah, so the computer that was supposed to be like a Brainiac invention. Yeah, right. And the the villain, the Lex Luthor knockoff, mm -hmm. was supposed to be Brainiac, right? Was that the idea? I my guess would be that he was gonna be Lex Luthor. No, I think he was supposed to be Brainiac. I think that oh, he was not teaming up with Lex Luthor. No, he was hiding out on Earth or whatever. Oh, and okay, then because right. Brainiac's all about computers or whatever. Sure, yeah. But it's really you you think he's gonna get like someone to punch at the end when the computer builds a robot, which I remember seeing as a kid and just being like, well, that's the most terrifying thing I've it's ever seen. It's the face and the wig on top it's of the horrible. face. It's horrible. Yeah, it's yeah. really horrible. But then he just kind of zaps her and she kind of tumbles into a little ditch. Yeah. And then he fights a computer and it's just like yeah. shifting parts and lasers and uh -huh. whatever. It's just, it's nothing. Mm. And full credit to Chris Reeve because he really looks like he's giving it his all yeah. fighting that computer. But imagine if it was like a big robot skull because it's actually Brainiac. <laughs> exactly, that would have been good. Yeah. It's also... I mean, not good, probably, but okay. So, even though we do have, like, a villainous computer and a sort of villainous Richard Pryor and a man who's sort of Lex Luthor or Brainiac... And, and some uh, cu couple of henchwomen. Couple of henchwomen as well, yeah. Including uh, Billy Connolly's wife. Yes, that's Pam right. Pamela, Pamela Stevenson, like Lady Connolly. And a woman also who's just referred to as being comically old and ugly. To me, she looks like a regular person. And that's Robert Vaughn's sister, is <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh -huh. I like his little 80s hideout skyscraper situation. It's good. It's better than living in the sewers. I agree. Mm. But no, the, the villain of this piece, I would say, that people remember is Evil Superman. And yeah. I think the next movie went, what if we just did Evil Superman? Man for the whole movie. Well, see, that's. I think I've been for years. I've been confusing elements of the last two movies from watching it as a kid. I remember him. I thought maybe they created an evil super. The computer created an evil Superman. Sure. But ultimately, he just you know Superman became evil for a little bit and then fought an illusion of himself, which makes me wonder: was it like a Fight Club scenario? <laughs> Are there a bunch of like junkyard workers just looking at a Superman beating himself oh, up and throwing himself I, through walls? I thought they were both real. Because they're both physically like hitting things. He really looked like he went in that trash compactor as well. They did that for yeah. real. Was, obviously it wasn't a real trash compactor. <laughs> but didn't it look like that he was actually yep. getting crushed in that? Giving 110%. I completely agree. Reeve. Yeah. Also, uh, I, I thought... Maybe he was. Maybe they, he does split into two. I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's some I, pretty... I think, uh, I think it's just junkyard workers looking at Superman going, stop hitting yourself. Oh, stop man. hitting yourself. I wish that they hung around to see that fight because they're all like, let's get out of here. A man yeah. or two men are going insane <laughs> and, we should, and we should go. The reason though he turns evil is because, again, it was revealed in an interview that kryptonite is his weakness. Kryptonite, I remember reading about it in an interview with him. And that's why they attempt to make kryptonite and they fill in the blanks with tar and that's what turns him evil. Uh -huh. But again, it's the same as the first movie. Maybe don't tell everybody your weaknesses, Superman. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Maybe he just loves a scoop. Maybe, that's true, yeah. yeah. So some of his evil acts are he straightens the Leaning Tower of Pisa and two just very dirty Italians in front of a green screen. They're not having it, are they, Mason? No, yeah. but they get two scenes. They get two which scenes. makes me wonder if they were famous at the time. Maybe. Maybe they were some sort of dirty Italian comedic <laughs> duo. Maybe they're famous in Italy, I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they're Mario Puzo's friends. That's entirely possible. Uh, he puts out the Olympic flame. 
Which made me wonder, what do they do if the Olympic flame actually does I think go they on? have a spare, like, they have a reserve, like, uh, one. Also, yeah. who cares, really? No, I don't care. It's fire. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's true. It's all the same, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. He also gets drunk. Yep. Uh, famously. In didn't the bar, he's flicking didn't peanuts. Think he could do that. He also in, the, in the new Superman and Lois, the trailer for the new show, uh, mm. th- that Superman goes... Man, I wish I could get drunk sometimes. Yeah, but, uh, me too, Superman. Maybe if you're on Kryptonite. Maybe if you're on Tar Kryptonite, you can. Yeah, you can get drunk, exactly. Uh, and one of the final acts is uh, he breaks open an oil tanker for sex. Um, so, <laughs> That's right, yeah. And then I completely... But haven't we all, you know? <laughs> but I completely forgot this. Because then immediately after, he flies back to the woman's house and then has sex with her. Like, it cuts to black. But then what I find hilarious, when they meet up at the end, he goes down to fight the robot. And she goes, oh, didn't it mean anything to you? Whatever. And he goes, lady, I don't know you. Yeah. But the thing is, right. Direct quote. But he would have had to have known her because he knew to go and fix the oil tanker. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I see what He's just saying. like, I would never. Not right. me. I'm Superman. I don't, yeah. I don't do that. Also, he went to her apartment after he turned good and there was the message waiting for for him. That's a good point. He clearly remembers. And they were like, Superman, come to us if you dare. And then they're like, we'll defeat him with, we're on little chairs with balloons attached. We'll, we'll, he'll fall into this trap where we just shoot rockets at an invincible man. Yeah, exactly. Also, that's not how computer games work. Well, you don't get points if you miss a target. <laughs> no, you, you don't. You don't get do points it. for trying Robert Vaughn. No, well, I was, I, I was going to save this for trivia, but I think most of our trivia has been used already. Oh, no, I've got one piece that I'll keep for later. But uh, the video game... Folks, look forward to our new segment, One Piece of Trivia. <laughs> the video game was created for the film. It originally looked so... Really? <laughs> yes, I know. I love this. It originally... <laughs> It originally looked so lifelike that the creators were asked to make it more computer-like. I bet it didn't. Bet Can you didn't, imagine yeah. how lifelike it could have looked? Like it would have tricked audiences? What is this? We don't understand. <laughs> Jesus. But I do love that evil Superman fight. Again, I think it's good Superman stuff. Again, it's 110% Christopher Reeve acting. Mm. You know, that face-off is, is good. Uh, they're just hitting each other with car parts and whatever. Yeah. And it ends with him strangling himself to death. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I just thoroughly enjoyed that. It's good solid work. It's good fun. I agree. Uh, so, and you know the bit where the computer hits him with radiation? Yes. There was something similar used in the death of Superman, so maybe the death of Superman copied from this. Huh. There you go. Also, just, if you're fighting a big computer, right? Mm-hmm. If you were fighting a big computer, if I said, Mason, I need you to fight this big computer. Uh, I would... Um, and you were Superman. Would you I- just stand around or would you just fly through it? Yeah, I'd probably go into space and grab a meteor <laughs> and then just drop it on the continent. Yeah, exactly. Freeze breath, heat vision, yeah. super clap. Well, give it the clap, am I right? Cause it's <laughs> bloody, you know what I mean? Lady, I don't know you, <laughs> all right? <laughs> so, uh, here's, here's a far bit of trivia, and I'm just going to leave it at this. One piece of trivia. One piece. <laughs> Office space. Um, look, if you've seen Office Space, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's right. It's one of those things you have to mention, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Watch Office Space if you haven't, because it's much better than this. But if you've seen Superman 3, you'll get what I'm talking about in Office Space when you watch Office Space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so after this, Christopher Reeve, who was, as I mentioned, very reluctant to return, was like, I- I'm-, I'm done with this. And his reasoning was that he felt there was only so much you could kind of do with the character. Uh-huh. And-, and he said similarly of James Bond, after Connery left, he didn't think the portrayals of James Bond and what they were doing with them they were kind of becoming too far-fetched and a bit ridiculous. Uh-huh. And so I guess he wasn't a fan of, like, the Roger Moore era and, you know, the things that he was around for at that time. So yes, You're talking about Sean Connery. Yeah, so he liked Sean Connery, but he didn't like the Roger uh, Moore I see, stuff, right, right, I should okay. say. Yeah. Though Connery also did come back in 83 for a Bond he movie. Did, that's right. Like, neither here nor there. But, of course, he was talked back into returning for Superman 4, mm-hmm. A Quest for Peace. That's right. Well, like A Quest for Piss, probably, am I right? Uh-huh. We'll come back. We'll talk about it, won't we, next week? Batman v Superman, the quest for piss. Oh, did you see the... I saw. Well, I was watching some behind-the-scenes thing as well, and there's a moment where Batman runs out of the computer, a guy in, like, a Batman costume. What? It's just in a... Like, it's a, an like, out, a, like, it's a, like prank. an outtake and like a, a prank. prank. Like a prank. I love pranks. And you love oh. jokes, and that's why you love this movie, Superman 3. I didn't hate it as much as I thought it would. I don't think it was very good. No. Nah. But there are some good scenes some, in I it. agree. I Because I was going into this like, I don't think I'm going to be able to enjoy this at all. Yeah. But there were some things in here which I thought were fine. I think you could take all the various good bits out of these movies and make a solid 10-minute YouTube video about it. You know? It would be incomprehensible 
Doesn't it would matter. be a random selection of scenes. Yep. But boy. Would it be a random collection of scenes? <laughs> Wouldn't it ever? Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. We do do this every week. And if you do want them early, you can actually go to Big Sandwich. Do, do. Do, do. I know, right? Just for piss. <laughs> uh, if you go to bigsandwich.com and sign up, they always go up there early. Because Ben here, who edits these, he, he gets them done a little bit early, doesn't he, Mason? That's right. Just for us. Goes above and beyond. He really does. So they go up there. But we also have bonus podcasts, including one on clickbait, including one on particular years in pop culture. That's right. We go through them. We do a bunch of movie commentaries, don't we? That's right. And we do a comic book club. Yes. We probably did The Death of Superman, or we're going to, aren't we? Oh, we we could, couldn't we? We We definitely should, yeah. That scene with the laser. Oh, my God. Can you imagine it? I mean, I've seen it. I saw it in this, so I could I could see it in a comic. <laughs> Less moving, though. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? I'll just move the page really quick back yeah, and no, forth. Good yeah. call. But also, of course, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows that comes out every Monday. If you do want to check it out, we do the news of the week and then we do a particular topic and we, we get, just get into it, don't we? And, and, then we, and then we say, sometimes we say what we've been reading or watching that week. That's right. And sometimes it's hours of a terrible TV show or something because we're doing one of these videos. Exactly. Sometimes I'm like, I don't have time to watch anything else. We watched all of the Inhumans. Oh, my God, but it was worth it in the end, wasn't it? Well, it's worth it because we don't have to watch it again. That's so, yeah, true. We never way. have to watch it again. <laughs> oh, I'm never going to have to watch Superman 3 ever again. No, that's true. Anyway, thanks, everyone, for watching, though. We appreciate it. That's right. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.